when I leave my house to go to work, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> I promote content about nursing and migrating to the UK. I also believe that people should have a good balance between mm. your job and yeah, having a normal yeah, life. Yeah. But they still pay for that, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Any opportunity you get, as long as your hospital says they will pay, whatever it is, go. Take it, grab it, run. There are a lot of opportunities that comes with nursing in the United Kingdom especially while working with the NHS. Now, in today's video, we are going to be exploring some of those opportunities with my guest. Today, I've got a wonderful ICU nurse in the United Kingdom with me here. She's a content creator also, and she has graciously agreed to share some of her experiences as a ICU nurse here in the United Kingdom. So welcome with me, Tasha. Lord, a round of applause, guys. <laughs> I, I honestly don't what? know what to say after that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a lot to say, oh, a whole lot. Can you please introduce yourself, Tasha, to my viewers? Hi, everyone. My name is Tasha Alexander Lord. I am an ICU nurse. I moved into the UK in 2019. It's actually June 2019. So this year is three years since I've been here. I am married, no children. And yeah, I, I can say I'm enjoying my experience now in the in England. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here on my channel. Um, we are really grateful. Thank you. And if you are new on this channel, hello, you're welcome. My name is Victoria and you just met Tasha. Today, it will be all about nursing in the UK as an overseas nurse. You know that transitioning and the different opportunities that's available for us as overseas nurses in the united kingdom i've got some questions for tasha today and uh, i'm going to be asking her some of these questions and if at any point in this video you've got some questions for her also make sure to leave them in the comment section below and she will be right there to give you answers to your question and who knows we might even make a whole new video about your question yeah. so don't be shy leave us a comment in the comment section and while we are at it please let me know are you a nurse in the uk or at the present you are still outside of the uk are you planning on moving into the uk as a nurse or not please let me know in the comment section um so tasha my first question will have been when did you get to the uk but you already answered that so you got to the uk three years ago that is that is great because i also got into the uk about three years ago i got into the uk um in august of 2019 it will be three years in a few months time and just amazes me how time flies like how time <laughs> yes. flies like <laughs> it, is, it is three years already, already just like yeah. that did you come in straight as an ICU nurse from your country or was there a point in time when you decided that you wanted to become an ICU nurse in the NHS in the UK can you just tell us briefly about uh, the process of you getting into the UK as a nurse so I qualified in my country in 2015 and I started working as an ICU nurse in 2016 so basically my first nursing job has been in ICU so when I applied to move to the UK, I did tell my agent that I wanted an ICU post. And so he looked for all of the hospitals that had vacancies for ICU nurses. And I had to had a look through the different places and decided which one was best for me. So I did move here as an ICU nurse. And my whole nursing career, I have been working in ICU. Um, so we can say that you are a born ICU nurse. <laughs> Well, yes, it is. Like it is in your. It's in your blood. Yes. <laughs> Was there any point in time when you felt like, oh, maybe, let me try another specialty. Let me just leave ICU for now and you know try somewhere else apart from ICU. Was there a point in time? I mean, a point like that. I think I have. I had never really thought about leaving because I felt. I always felt like. I could either work in ICU, in the theater, or in the mortuary. I just needed patients to be asleep. That's how I felt. And it's because we're so used to it. And honestly, after the pandemic, I really, since then, I've been thinking maybe my time in ICU is done. That's how, but I think it's 
probably just a traumatic response because of like a response to this traumatic experience because during the pandemic it was really difficult for us mentally especially mm -hmm. been thinking maybe there's other things out there but for now i am currently specializing in icu so even if back home I was working in an ICU and even when I moved here, I've been working in ICU that still doesn't qualify you to be an ICU specialized nurse. So my hospital every year, there's a program that they run where they select staff to specialize. So the hospital pays for you, the trust mm -hmm. pays for you to go and study and specialize. And that is what I'm currently doing now. So I think I still have a few more ICU years before me. <laughs> Wow, that's that is great. That is great. You know, during the pandemic, I know that the pandemic it us um the medical staff and the hospital, it it was really great. But I feel especially for you know people working in the ICU, like it must have been very, very terrifying. I mean, especially with those who really had the the who, who are really affected by covid because like it's like you guys are the ones that they really fall forefront of the whole pandemic wow well yeah. done guys shout out to all icu nurses in the building <laughs> you guys are doing awesome yeah so you mentioned your nhs trust sponsoring you for a program and then you i know it's something that is common in the uk and even I myself, I mean, I just got to the NHS about six months ago and I've been having, I mean, receiving a lot of emails about, oh, how I need to like develop myself more. Um, there's funding for this, for that. You have £1,000 that you have not used. Join a meeting to ask your questions on how to use it. And, you know, there's so much opportunities for expansion for specialization in nhs and i think that is one of the beautiful things about nhs um so as an overseas nurse who is working in the nhs i know a lot of people also have this question so do you think you know we are not entitled to public funds would you call this a public fund a national cake that we are eating <laughs> or is it available to all nurses like we don't have to worry because i know such things like that are usually considered when it's time for your high lr to receive your high lr and things like that so do you think by accepting to use the nhs fund you are using a public fund or do you have a different opinion so, um you know when you get your visa for those those people coming when you get your visa you would not be entitled to receive public funds which is funds where the government uses to help people who need it right now because you your visa that you're coming with um you requires you to work as a nurse or a healthcare assistant so you studying something that is directly related to your job would not be considered public funds so your hospital or your trust Pay, paying for you to study something would not be considered public funds. So you don't have to worry about that. Public funds would be if you um, don't have money to buy food and you want to go and expect them to just give you money to buy food, it doesn't work that way. But if your hospital decides they're going to pay for you to study something that is in line with what with the job that you have, then that would not be considered public funds. So don't worry about that. And when you come or if you are already here, any opportunity you get, as long as your hospital says they will pay, whatever it is, go. Take it, grab it, run. That's awesome. Thank you so much for clarifying that for us. My next question would have been that what was the cost implication? But now we know that it is the NHS funding this. So how did you know that it was time for you to actually level up? How do you know that it was time for you to actually get on with specializing, with learning more, with um, getting ready for the next band? Because I've discovered that a lot of us overseas nurses, when we come to the UK, um, we kind of relax. I mean, when we are in our country, we try as much as possible to get all the educations that we need. Because the opportunities are limited, especially when you are not educated to a particular point. I mean, like, oh, 
you want to get to the next band in your nursing career, they will tell you, you need to have masters, you need to, you know, do this and do that. And then you see people having degree in nursing, they have RN, they have degree, they have masters, they have PhD, they are going on one course or the other just to keep on, you know, improving yeah. and going up the ladder in their nursing career. But a lot of times when we get to the UK, we just kind of relax, like, oh, this is the end. Like, a lot of people see the UK as the end, while some people see the UK as the means to an mm -hmm. end. So, at what point will you say you really like felt like oh it's time to like advance my career i don't just want to sit down on band five i really want to like move forward at what point do you think um that idea struck you so in the uk in most icus in order to promote from a band five to a band six you would have had to do the critical care course so I was not interested after the pandemic, it was too much. I was not interested in studying or doing anything. However, one of the things I love about the UK is how supportive the management can be because my managers were literally behind me. You should apply, you should apply. Oh, it will um, be a good experience. You can move up. So I decided, okay, I will apply. And since I have, since I applied and started the course, I have learned so, so much. I'm, I'm grateful, even if I mean, I will go up to a band six and that will be a little more money that is motivating. However, the knowledge that I have gained and it helps me in my practice and my experience with the patient is something I cannot even explain to you. So for me, I would say that it wasn't that I felt like I really needed to, although I did want to do it at some point, but because you have supportive management back home in my country, every now and then it was always a fight. Like you, you want to progress and the managers would find a way to try to prevent you from doing it. But I love the fact um here that people always push you to go do this try that and that's one of the things i love about about here that is great i used to tell people like when i see nurses trying to come into the uk i say when you are when you are praying some of the prayers that you should be adding to your prayer point is that god will surround you with better people like better managers managers that will prompt you that will spur you on to do better to you know be a better person, be a better nurse, and yeah, we salute your manager. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you so much for that. Uh, so, you are a nurse and high CU nurse, you're a content creator, you are a wife. How do you manage all this? Like, even me that I am single, sometimes when I look at my life, I'll be like, hey, God, how would I do this? Like, there's just a lot to do and yeah. um, little time. The time is just not enough for me to do a lot of things. And I just imagine like, how, when you now start having children, how will you manage? <laughs> so can you share with us, how have you been able to cope with the challenges of, you know, doing all these things together and um, you are really doing well at it? How, 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 how have you been able to, I mean, what are the challenges and how have you been able to scale through the challenges? So I wouldn't really say that I'm managing. I, I, right now I feel like I'm struggling with having enough time to get everything done. So with the course, we have classes every other Tuesday. So the whole day I will be in class. All right, can I hold your thoughts there? So when you have classes on Tuesdays, does that mean you don't get to walk? You don't get to go to the hospital on Tuesdays? It's like a protected study day, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, they protect their study. Oh, great, great! But they still pay for that, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's that's good. Please go on. Yeah. So I study on every other Tuesday. This class the entire day, and then I have three shifts that I work. So it could be day shifts or night shifts, and we still have to study at least like four to five hours every week to cover the content of the course. And the course runs for one year. So currently I'm doing that. And I also, I don't know if you guys watch or if you've been on my channel or watch my videos, I'm very 
obsessed with um, gyming and fitness and health. So a lot of my time is spent at the gym. I also help a lot of my coworkers get nice. in shape because I believe that as health professionals, we should also be promoting health. So That's I do right. that as well. And I recently started swimming. I'm doing my driving and I just joined a netball team. So I'm playing in a league right now. So what really suffers is my YouTube. <laughs> so I feel like you have to get a schedule and find something that works for you. So for me, I have my calendar on my desk and every week it has a list of everything I need to get done for every wow. day. Because wow. if I don't do that, things wow. will get missed. <laughs> so it's, for me, it's a lot of planning and being consistent and being disciplined. I try to post two videos every week. I try to post on Wednesdays and Sundays. However, I am still struggling with getting the time. Sometimes I record the video, but even the editing takes some time and I have a lot to do. So as much as possible, I would do at least one video every week. And I'm hoping that as things get better, I would be able to increase that. But you're doing better than me, Victoria, because you're able to be consistent with your content. But I think it's a lot of planning, guys. But you will be fine. I actually missed my upload day last... Oh, today is Wednesday. I'm supposed to post today. Like, I don't even know what to post. I'm actually editing some videos, but then it yeah. is well... I saw that you are very big on fitness. <laughs> I also, I try to walk. Actually, I walk for about 30 minutes every day. That's Monday to Friday, at least, when I go to yes. work. So, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> that's it. That is it. As long as you try, that's enough. As long as you try, that's enough. <laughs> Another thing that I'm trying to do is to register for swimming classes. I mean, I know how to swim, but I'm not so very good. So, I really yeah. want to make it um, consistent, you know, um, swimming. And um, thank you for that planner thing that you showed us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a... I've never been a planner, really. I I try to plan, but then I don't really, like, put it into perspective, like, put it into, you know, the day, like, you just did yours. Do you have any videos on your channel about, you know, planning and being productive, you know, things like that? Yes, yeah. I, I actually do have a video talking about um, how I plan in order to be to make sure i don't miss any dates because back home everything was chill like i come from saint lucia in the caribbean everything is chill nobody's making a big deal about anything you miss a deadline oh don't worry about it but hey since i moved there everything you have to do it on time if you yeah. miss it you miss it and so one of my earliest videos we can probably um link that video so if you if you are interested i talk about how i plan and manage my life because not only do I promote content about nursing and migrating to the UK, I also believe that people should have a good balance between mm. your job and mm. having a normal yeah. life and yeah. being very successful in life and enjoying mm. the best in life. So I do yeah. have a lot of videos about finance and manage uh, management and all of that. So if you guys are interested in that as well, you can have a look at my... Hi. I'm actually very interested. So I'm going to be binging on those videos once we finish this. Like, I need this in my life. I need to be serious with my life. <laughs> yeah. And guys, Tasha is from St. Lucian. Am I right? Yes. Very first time, because we've tried recording this before. The first time we did this, I, you know, I, I just assumed that she's a Nigerian. <laughs> so... Because we are nice people, we are going to. In fact, she's already adopted. We have adopted. Her. <laughs> so please help me drop her, drop her a Nigerian name in the comment section. Please give her a Nigerian name. Then she will look through and pick the one she wants, and that's what we'll find. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is um is diverse. It can be tedious. It can be challenging, and all that. I mean, when you are a nurse, you just get a lot of different feelings at different points in time about nursing so uh we'd like to know what is uh, one major thing that you like about nursing so one of the things i love about nursing is when i leave my house to go to work i'm not happy about that <laughs> when i get to work when i'm there with the patients that like that is what i'm enjoying 
that is what I love. The interaction with the patients and the fact that I work in ICU. I love to see patients that were very, very sick that you thought would die get better mm -hmm. and then they come and visit you or they send nice things or they send mm -hmm. photos mm -hmm. and that is very exciting for me mm -hmm. so i love my interaction with um the patients i had a patient yesterday who i was telling one of my colleagues that i i played a netball match and they made me the woman of the match that was my first time and mm -hmm. he made me one of the match. i didn't know he was listening he was an elderly man i didn't know he was listening so when his family came to visit him he said oh this is my nurse uh, her name is Tash. She played um, netball last night. She joined the big one of the biggest leagues. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, you said that, right? And she wiped. She yeah, wiped magnified her, it. Uh, she wiped the floor with her opponent's faces. <laughs> and I was like, it, it was really, it was really so warm <laughs> for me. I I love interacting like with patients. That's what I love about this. Right, thing. right. Awesome, great. You know, I I have similar experiences too. I like really. <laughs> When it's time to go to work, I'll be like, oh my God, I don't want to get out of my bed. Yeah. But once I step my feet on the hospital ground, once I start my nursing duties, then everything changed and I'm all bubbly and yeah. happy and doing my thing. Are you a dog person or a cat person? A dog person. Dog person. Well, right. I am none. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my, my family used cats. to have a, my family used to have a dog when I was younger, but then the, the dog um got diseased and we didn't get any other one after that. I actually like the dog, but then I, I don't think I'm going to get any pets again. No no. <laughs> so are you a coffee person or a tea person? Probably tea because I don't drink coffee, but I don't drink tea often either. So only when I'm sick. Uh, <laughs> right i found out that um coffee actually has an heightened effect on me like if i keep mm. drinking coffee i tend to lose my sleep now when oh. i'm supposed to be resting and sleeping my eyes yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so i prefer tea i'm most likely when you see me drinking a beverage it's most likely tea or, tea. or chocolate inside yeah. london or outside london <sighs> Outside London, outside. Right now, I am inside London, or right outside of London, a little bit. So that's still considered London. Right. And I would discourage anybody, anybody, if you're listening, please don't listen to anybody else. Listen to me. <laughs> Do not come to London. Do not. <laughs> now, the reason I say that is because it's expensive, and I have so many videos on my channel, guys, especially recently talking about it. And all of my co-workers, when we meet, we talk about how horrible it is and how expensive it is. And basically, you work and your whole salary goes towards bills and rent. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage anybody to go outside of London. Sometimes you right. say, oh, I want to live in London because I want to enjoy the nice life. I live right there. I've only gone to London like three times, like central London. So don't think you'll be going to London all the time. So if you love London life, live outside so you'd have enough money to go and visit london but i live yeah. right where i don't have any money to go and visit any London. right so just like any other capital city yeah. like in nigeria too um okay abuja is the capital now but before it uh -huh. was lagos and even then since when i was in nigeria i never wanted to live in lagos like no no because i believe no matter how much they are paying you, you still uh -huh. spend all that money. You spend it there. Same thing with London. London yeah. money stays yep. in London. So when uh -huh. I tell people when they are trying to come in and say, it's preferable that you stay outside London. It's not like we are saying that you should not enjoy London, no. But stay far away. I mean, yeah. I'm still going to bring back Tasha to talk more about, you know, life in london so watch yes. out for that uh thank you so much tasha for honoring this invitation we really appreciate you for coming on the channel do you have any final word for my viewers perhaps those that are still planning to come in into the uk as nurses and it, it was my pleasure being here i would like to tell anyone who plans on coming to make sure you do your research there's a lot of videos out there a lot of content out there speaking about the experiences in the uk mm -hmm. So go and have a look, do your research, read about things before you make decisions, because the decision that you make would be a, would differentiate whether you have a good or a bad experience here. Cause there are people who come and have bad experiences and go back home. Mm -hmm. But if you do your research and you plan properly, you're going to be absolutely fine. 
right thank you so much tasha i really appreciate you and you guys please help me thank tasha in the comment section for <laughs> honoring this invitation and if you've got any question at all please leave it in the comment section and don't forget tasha's nigerian name <laughs> thank you so much guys for watching i really appreciate you, you. until next time when we we'll see you in the next video take care and bye bye